Oh. Did you think that we were going to be talking about Fast and Furious Supercharged? Listen, it's a bad portion of the Hollywood tram tour, and is an even worse full-blown attraction in Florida. However, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I've had a fair amount to say about how this attraction is just so absurdly bad that it has become ironically funny. It may not be a good ride, but it's definitely a fun one with the right audience. So what exactly are we talking about today when I highlight Universal's bad attractions? Is it going to be their oversaturation of screens that became an unfortunate trend over the last decade? Well, no. Universal Studios Florida in particular does have too many screen-based experiences, but other than Fast and Furious, I wouldn't consider any of them to be bad. I have also seen people express negative sentiment about other older attractions located in the parks, such as E.T. or The Cat in the Hat. I mean, yeah, I'll admit that they're not well-maintained, but at their core, they're still great experiences. So, what are these awful attractions, and why am I producing a video about them? It's no secret that Universal has really been turning their parks around, and people have been noticing. Everything changed for me in 2019, when Hagrid's premiered at Island of Adventure. It's a ride that blew me away on my first time riding, and it still continues to hold up extremely well. Since that point though, Universal has been on a huge streak of creating exceptional attractions. The Jurassic World retheme of Jurassic Park the Ride in Hollywood is an improvement on the already strong original, and The Secret Life of Pets is far more clever and well done than it has any right to be. Islands of Adventure opened the Velocicoaster in 2021, and in the same year, so did Universal Beijing, sporting the incredibly ambitious Jurassic World Adventure where a massive Indominus Rex animatronic chases the ride vehicle. Super Nintendo World is an ambitious interactive land that I've spoken about at length elsewhere, and while the Mario Kart attraction has received a lot of mixed reviews, I still think it's incredibly solid if you go in with the right expectation of what it's trying to do. Universal has clearly shown that they're taking guest feedback seriously, aiming for more ambitious physical attractions, even if screens are still used to supplement scenes when necessary. It has led me to become incredibly optimistic about the future of their parks, including Epic Universe, which will open in Orlando in 2025. So, with so much to look forward to, I think it would be interesting to contrast this with where Universal is failing, because they legitimately do have a small selection of truly awful rides that I think are worth taking a look at. Let's first talk about Universal Singapore, which was definitely not something I was familiar with until researching it recently. This is by no means a bad park, but it's very different from what you're going to find elsewhere. Located on the island of Sentosa, this particular park is part of a larger resort and casino complex that is owned and run by Genting Group. This is the only park not owned and run by Universal, and Genting Group pays to use the Universal license. That being said, a lot of attractions are going to be similar to what you can find in other Universal parks, as this is where Transformers The Ride 3D first premiered, and this park's Revenge of the Mummy shares the same track layout as the one in Florida, with only minor changes in between the scenes. However, you can definitely tell that there is something off about this park. The animatronics definitely look like they're produced by a manufacturer that Universal doesn't really work with, as they're a lot more stiff and have more limited movement. This is best exemplified with a ride unique to the resort, Sesame Street Spaghetti Space Chase. It's not a bad ride by any means, but you're not going to see animatronics with these particular expressions of movement in any of their other resorts. On first impression, Universal Singapore is going to look a bit cheap in comparison because of this. For example, Puss in Boots' Giant Journey is going to be a 2015 addition to the far far away section of the park. On first impression, it's a pretty bare-bones, suspended coaster, containing animatronics with rather limited movement. 
While that is true, it does actually look to be a pretty fun ride. However, this is where Universal's first awful attraction comes into the conversation. What I like about this park is the small but immersive lands, and far far away is a great recreation of the kingdom from Shrek 2. However, the land's anchor attraction when it opened is located in the castle from the film. Can you guess what's inside? Yup, it's going to be Shrek 4D, which is probably the most disappointing attraction reveal ever. If you've ever been on Shrek 4D in the United States, you know it was just something to do to pad out your day. The ride film itself is something that you could buy on DVD back in the day, which I definitely remember owning, and you can now find it included with a bunch of other shorts in DreamWorks Spooky Stories, which is available to watch on Netflix. It was never a great attraction, as it just shook you around violently in a chair while stuff was happening on screen. However, it's easy to dismiss when it's just in a small theater alongside much better attractions. What makes it so bad in Singapore is just how disappointing it is. You enter this impressive facade expecting some sort of incredible Shrek dark ride, and yet it's just the physically violent version of the Netflix special. However, we've all known that this ride is essentially just a meme for the last two decades, so I would like to transition to an actual dark ride. Granted, this just closed in June of 2022 to make way for a Minions-themed land in another Super Nintendo world, but Madagascar, a crate adventure, is legitimately a poorly executed dark ride. It's been years since I've seen the film, but to the best of my recollection, the ride does seem to just recreate scenes from it. While the concept of the ride itself isn't inherently bad by any means, it's the execution that makes it weak. Because it is a slow-moving boat ride, the scenes have to be set in a certain way to hide sight lines and create a natural flow between them. Disney of the past seemed to master this quite well, knowing how to use space effectively to transition from one scene to the next. However, it's clear that Universal's creative teams didn't really know how to do that here. The ride layout doesn't seem conducive to creating a natural narrative flow, and instead, each scene uses some low-level animatronics and hides them in the dark. When it comes time to approach these scenes, they will light up and an audio cue will play, which gets tedious quite quickly, as that's essentially the design of the entire ride. It's certainly not the worst thing in the world, but it's not particularly strong attraction design either. I also won't knock on figures with lower levels of animation though, as I actually prefer this to a lot of ride design today. I think it's important for slow moving dark rides to populate their scenes with a lot of simpler figures because it adds a great deal to the atmosphere of an attraction, as opposed to the hyperfluid figures that often seem wasted because they don't contribute much to the overall experience. Still, the scenes in this ride lack a much needed kineticism because their figures are often a little too simple. There are also a fair number of screens used throughout, and while these can be great in supplementing a more physical attraction, the execution is also very weak. You can see that they just don't blend in with the scenery very well. This ride very much reminds me of something that you would see at a park like Motion Gate. The components are there for an interesting ride, but it just seems to be executed in all the wrong ways. Still, this attraction has now closed to make way for new additions to Universal Singapore, so let's move on to a more recent attraction that I found to be incredibly disappointing. When Universal Beijing opened, I feel that everyone was so impressed by Jurassic World that they forgot to look critically at the rest of the park. The anchor attraction is undeniably an industry game changer, but the park also contains another ride that became the primary reason I wanted to produce this video. One of the lands included in the park is Kung Fu Panda, Land of Awesomeness. It takes place entirely indoors and includes a number of small flat rides in conjunction with shops and Mr. Ping's Noodle House. However, the anchor attraction for this area is going to be a dark ride titled Kung Fu Panda Journey of the Dragon Warrior. On entering the queue, you're going to experience a comically excessive number of switchbacks throughout this massive building. I understand that the park will probably see good attendance, but I'm having a hard time believing that this is necessary. 
Once you reach the load platform, you'll step into your boat and be on your way. Immediately, I notice that this attraction has the same issue as Madagascar, and that the space is far too open and that the scenes flow poorly. I believe that, for the most part, if you're going to utilize a slow-moving boat ride, you have to design your scenes to be dense with detail, allowing riders to study individual aspects of them. There is no better example of this than Pirates of the Caribbean. However, if we want to use a universal example, The Secret Life of Pets is good to learn from as well. On this ride though, the story is very much action-oriented, which does not work at all for the slow-moving boats and the rather limited movement of the animatronics. The lack of kinetic movements from the figures themselves is supplemented with screens and projection effects, but something about it just feels rather underwhelming to me. Even larger scenes like the town containing more figures still seems rather bare-bones in its design. Again, it feels very much like something you would find in a park in Dubai, and not something created by Universal. Another issue to point out is that roughly half the ride is action on screens. I think that screens can work to portray action if you have a highly dynamic ride vehicle, or in the case of The Secret Life of Pets, is used to supplement physical scenes, such as the exploding fireworks factory. Here though, you're just slowly floating by a series of cheap looking vignettes as action scenes play out on a loop. It's not particularly interesting or engaging, and takes up the entire middle portion of the ride. However, on going down a small drop and moving through a dome to screen that concludes the action, the rest of the ride slowly meanders throughout the town again. The animatronics have returned, but they're not doing anything particularly interesting other than congratulating you. If we return back to The Secret Life of Pets as an example, we can see that these scenes are more densely populated with more interesting figures. The more you look, the more you will notice different gags occurring throughout them. I think, then, that this reveals one of the major issues with this ride. A lot of the figures move just for the sake of moving and have no purpose in doing so. They're not doing anything that adds to the visuals in a story and action-driven attraction that is already ill-suited to a slow-moving boat ride. There is a physical comedy to the secret life of pets that exists within the background of the narrative, and that's where Kung Fu Panda fails in comparison. Boats are one of my favorite ride systems, and so that's why it's disappointing to me that Universal can't seem to get them right. Well, here we are, having circled right back around again to Fast and Furious Supercharged. It's a bad attraction, and I don't need to tell you that. It has become a prolific example of what not to do when designing a new ride. Yet, at the very least, it's something that you can enjoy ironically. Since then though, Universal has entered a new era that I'm highly optimistic for. They have proved, again and again over the last few years, that they want to impress audiences with great attraction design. That's why it's important to be critical. They have heard loud and clear that the parks are oversaturated with too many screen-based experiences, and they have reacted accordingly. It's easy to focus on this one particular aspect of their parks, so that's why I thought it was important to highlight their weaker but less spoken about experiences here. To be fair, I don't think there's much they can do about Shrek 4D in Singapore, and they've already demolished their underwhelming Madagascar attraction. I thought they would be interesting to throw into the conversation, but the primary drive behind this video was to discuss Beijing's Kung Fu Panda ride. It's bizarre to me that a ride this week exists in the same park as Jurassic World because it feels as if they were produced by two completely different companies. As Universal Studios Florida has now closed Kids Zone, it has left me a little concerns for the future of this area. Universal has clearly teased that there is likely going to be a DreamWorks re-theme when it reopens, and it makes me wonder if they will add in some dark rides. There have long been rumors of demolishing play areas and building a few indoor attractions, which is why something so slapped together like Journey of the Dragon Warrior is so concerning. Granted, permits require construction to be done by 2024, so whatever is going in this area isn't likely going to be a major new ride. However, with a DreamWorks re-theme, it does open the area up to future additions, 
and I hope that if new plans are eventually considered, a lot of effort goes into creating a dark ride more akin to Secret Life of Pets in its design choices and execution. This video was a little less substantial than usual, but if you got this far, you can do me a favor by simply leaving a like. As always though, if you want to stay notified on new videos when they release, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button with bell notification.